Dear students, today we will be discussing about flat plate collector losses and loss estimation. Okay? So, what are different collector losses like side losses, bottom losses, top losses. So, these losses need to be estimated correctly, then only we can investigate the performance of a flat plate collector. Okay? As we have understand in the previous classes like energy balance on the observer plate can be expressed by using this equation. Okay? So, q u is equal to a p into s minus q l. What is q u? This is the useful heat gain right? Okay? a p is the collector area or observer area and s is the flux which is received by the observer plate. right? And this S is a function of these many parameters. Okay? So, I B into R B multiplied by tau into alpha for beam radiation, then I D into R D plus I D plus I B into R R, then as a whole it is multiplied by tau alpha for diffuse radiation. So, we understood how to calculate this tau alpha for beam radiation and diffuse radiation. We understand how to calculate this S. Okay? So, this part is now known to us, but in order to find out q u we need to know q l. Okay? So, q l is nothing but the heat loss from the collector. Okay? So, this q l is a function of all the losses like the kind of losses taking place from the top of the collector, from the side of the collector and from the bottom of the collector. Okay? So, what I have shown here is a one glass cover and then observer plate of course, tubes will be there okay, through which heat transfer fluid flows right? and these are insulations, these are insulations some thickness you have to maintain these are insulations, insulation and these are insulation. Okay? This is side insulation and this is the bottom insulation in order to reduce the heat losses. Okay? So, this q l that is heat loss from the collector can be estimated by using this expression if we know u l a p and t p minus t a. What is u l is the overall loss coefficient okay? and a p is the area of the observer plate and t p m is the average temperature of the observer plate and t a is the temperature of the surrounding air or ambient temperature of the air. right? So, once you know these values, then straight away you can calculate what is q l. right? So, as we understand this q l is a function of other three losses. Okay? So, this q l is equal to q t plus q b plus q s. Okay? This heat loss from the collector is the sum of the heat loss from the top, heat loss from the bottom, then heat loss from the side. Okay? So, we can add it. Right? And this heat loss or rate of heat loss can be expressed in terms of loss coefficient. If we express in terms of loss coefficient, then our expression will be something like this. Okay? So, q t will be u t a p multiplied by t p m minus t a. Right? So, what is u t is top loss coefficient right? and for calculation of rate at which heat loss from the bottom takes place, then we use this expression q b is equal to u b multiplied by a p and then t p m minus t a. Right? So, what is u b here is the bottom loss coefficient. Right? Similarly, a rate at which heat is lost from the side can be calculated by using this expression where u s is the side loss coefficient. Okay? So, as we understand this q l is nothing but sum of all the three losses that is q t, q b and q s. Right? So, if we substitute this expression for q l already you know u l multiplied by a p then t p m minus t a is equal to we have u t a p this expression then we have T p m minus T a plus u b a p 
T P M minus T A plus U S A P T P M minus T A, right. So, these are common for all the cases, right, heat loss is taking place, okay, from the plate to the ambient. So, these are common. So, finally, what we can write U L is equal to U T plus U B plus U S or what you can say if we divide the both side of the expression by A P multiplied by T P minus T A. So, what we will get U L is equal to U T plus U B plus U S. Okay? So, what we have written here? This is nothing but the overall loss coefficient. right? So, this is very, very important parameter to measure all the losses okay? and each value should be in the range of 2 to 10 watt per meter square per Kelvin. Okay? So, if this value falls in between this range, then our design can be considered. Okay? So, otherwise losses will be very, very high. So, under that conditions, we will be you no know, losing our efficiencies. Okay? So, once we know this E L, then if we substitute in the energy balance equation, then from that we can calculate what will be the useful heat gain. Okay? So, we will demonstrate how this UL can be calculated by solving a numerical problem. Okay? So, let us have a look about UT or top loss coefficient, okay? how to calculate this top loss coefficient. Okay? So, before we start the top loss coefficient, let us understand this thermal resistance network. Okay? So, here what happens if we consider this is the plate absorber plate at temperature T P M okay? and this is at ambient in all the cases it is ambient. Okay? This is towards top, okay? top this is side and this is bottom. Okay? So, heat loss will take place from this plate to the sides, plate to the top then this plate to the bottom. So, these are the thermal resistances. Okay? So, we can express in terms of thermal resistances. Okay? So, this component is the thermal resistance for the when heat is transferring from this plate to the bottom. Okay? This kind of resistance is offered and here you can say the side and this is you know, along the top. Okay? And also what we can do, we can make equivalent resistance diagram. So, if we combine these three components and we can make something like this and it will be something like this. Okay? So, under that condition we can use what will be the U L or if we know U L then we can calculate what is Q L. Okay? So, this is the equivalent thermal resistance network. Right? The component what we have discussed in the last slides these are represented in this thermal resistance network diagram. Okay? Now, let us have a look how to estimate top loss coefficient. Okay? So, this top loss coefficient can be evaluated by considering convection and radiation losses from the absorber plate in the upward direction. Okay? So, there are some assumptions while evaluating this top loss coefficient. What are the assumptions? First assumption is the transparent covers and the absorber plate constitute a system of infinite parallel surfaces. Okay? So, it is assumed that plates are infinite okay? and the flow of heat is one dimensional and steady. Right? The temperature drop across the thickness of the cover is negligible. For example, if we consider this case, so here what happens? Two glass covers are present and one absorber plate right? and this is the sky temperature okay? because of this lot of molecules will be there like carbon dioxide, water vapor, they will also emit some kind of radiation that kind of radiation is you know can also be taken care by using this T sky. So, if no it is thicker okay? of course, there will be no uh, it has got some thickness. Okay? So, there should not be any heat losses here. Okay? So, there will be no drop of temperature in those regions right here and then here. Right? So, that is what it is said temperature drop across the thickness of the cover is negligible. The interaction between the incoming solar radiation absorbed by the covers and the outgoing loss 
may be neglected. Okay? So, some radiation will fall here, it will go something like this. So, this kind of things are neglected. Okay? So, no losses are taking place, it is assumed. The transparent cover is assumed to be opaque. So, uh, no, no radiation is you know, going out, it is uh, opaque to the long wave radiation. So, all the waves will be retained inside the collector system. Okay? Now, this heat transfer by convection and radiation absorber plate and the first cover, if we are interested about uh, no, from this plate to this plate. Okay? So, this is heat transfer by convection and radiation from absorber plate to the first glass cover. Okay? So, in this case two glass covers are considered glass cover 1, glass cover 2. Okay? This is the absorber plate. Okay? So, in the first case what we will do? The, the kind of heat transfer taking place from this plate to the glass cover 1, we are interested to develop the equations by which we can calculate the rate of heat transfer. Okay? So, Q T by A P is equal to H P D is nothing but heat transfer coefficient from plate to the cover 1 multiplied by T P M because this plate temperature is T P M minus T C 1. So, this is the temperature okay, T C 1 heat exchange between this plate to this glass cover 1 and then radiation component has to be added. Okay? So, sigma T p m to the power 4 minus T c 1 to the power 4 then 1 by emissivity of the plate, this is emissivity of the plate and this is the emissivity of the glass cover. Okay? Both the glass are of the same emissivities. So, since it is infinitely parallel surfaces, so we can use this expression for view factor. Okay? And if we are interested to calculate the rate of heat transfer from glass cover 1 to glass cover 2, then we have to use this equation. Right? So, this H C 1 to H C 2 is the heat transfer coefficient okay? and multiplied by T C 1 minus T C 2. So, since heat exchange is between these two plates okay? and this is the radiative component and this is the convective heat transfer part, this is the relative heat transfer part. Okay? And if we are interested to develop the equation or heat exchange between the T C 2 to M B N, then we have to use this expression. Okay? So, H W is the heat transfer coefficient when heat is exchanging from this glass cover to the ambient and this T C 2 is the temperature of the glass cover, then T sky is the sky temperature. So, uh, please note that this sky temperature is different than this ambient temperature. Okay? This sky temperature is from those element which is absorbed in the atmosphere okay? and this part is the radiative component part. Okay? So, it has got two components what is convective part and then radiative part. Okay? So, uh, we have explained how this can be added and uh, how this rate of heat transfer can be calculated okay? between these parallel plates. Right? Now, let us learn how this heat transfer coefficient uh, can be calculated. Right? If we go back to the last slides, so these heat transfer coefficients, okay, this heat transfer coefficients need to be calculated. Okay? So, in this expression, so our primary intention is to calculate this Qt by Ap. Right? This unknown is Qt and then Tc1 and here is the Tc2. Right? So, Q T, T C 1, T C 2 are the unknowns. Right? But this H P C 1, this heat transfer coefficient when heat is exchanging from the plate to the cover 1 and then from cover 1 to the cover 2 and then from cover 2 to the M B N. So, we can use some correlations to calculate these heat transfer coefficients. Okay? So, let us learn how these correlations can be utilized to calculate heat transfer coefficient between the parallel plates. Okay? So, Busberg et al developed the following correlation based on the experimental investigations of natural convection heat transfer coefficient for the enclosed spaces. That means, between the absorber plate to the first cover and the first cover to the second cover. Okay? So, this correlations is something like that. So, if R A cos beta is less than 1708, then we will use nacelle number is 1. Okay? So, if this value R A cos beta is 
in between this and this then we will go for discorrelation. If this R A cos beta is in between these two values then we will go for this expression and then finally, if this value is very high then we will go for this expression. But we should be very very particular about you know how to calculate the properties of the fluid. Okay? So, the properties are to be evaluated at the arithmetic mean of the surface temperatures. Okay? So, what does it mean? So, if there are two plates they are having at say T C 1 and then T P then you know this fluid what is moving inside. So, properties has to be calculated at T C 1 plus T P divided by 2. Okay? So, after that only we can do the calculation. right? Also, we need to use other correlations for calculation of HW that is heat transfer from the top of the glass to the ambient. right? So, this kind of heat transfer uh, coefficient also known as wind heat transfer coefficient. Okay? So, make Adams correlations are something like HW is equal to 5.7 plus 3.8 into E v infinity. This is nothing but E or V that is velocity. Okay? So, we can write E v infinity or V infinity it is the same meaning it is unit is meter per second. Okay? Also, there are other correlations developed by Test et al. He has demonstrated based on his experimental observations that H w is equal to 8.55 plus 2.56 into velocity infinity. Okay? So, this is in meter per second. Okay? So, it's either of these two correlations can be utilized to find out H w value. Okay? So, if I am interested to calculate the sky temperature then normally we use this correlation T sky is T a minus 6. Normally, it is assumed that it is less than ambient temperature. Okay? So, T a minus 6. Okay? If we deduct 6 from the ambient then what we will get is a sky temperature. Right? Now, let us learn how bottom loss coefficients are evaluated. Okay? So, this bottom loss coefficient is evaluated by considering conduction and convection losses from the absorber plate towards downward. Okay? So, this way from okay? this way this will come and assumptions are flow of heat is one dimensional and steady. Okay? and thermal resistance associated with conduction dominates. Okay? That is why convective part is neglected. Right? So, in this case if we know this thickness of the insulation that is delta B and then conductivity of the insulation then straight away you can calculate what will be the U B. Okay? So, U B is nothing but K i by del B which is equal to thermal conductivity of insulation and then thickness of the insulation. So, if these two parameters are known then straight away you can calculate what will be U B. Right? So, once we are done with bottom loss coefficient then our next attempt is to calculate side loss coefficient. Okay? So, let us uh, learn how to calculate side loss coefficient. So, in side loss coefficient is estimated based on convection and conduction heat transfer. Okay. So, let us learn how to calculate side loss coefficient. Okay. So, this side loss coefficients can be estimated by considering both conduction and convective heat transfer. Okay. So, here also conduction resistance dominates and the flow of heat is one dimensional and steady. As we know Q s can be expressed something like this Q s is equal to U s multiplied by A p T p m minus T a. Right? So, here A p we can calculate something like this, this area we need to uh, calculate. Okay? So, this way we can calculate the area. Okay? So, if we know this L 2 is the length and L 1 is the breadth and H is the height. Okay? So, area will be something like this because there are two sides, this sides and this sides and also this sides and this sides. So, all the things need to be considered. Okay? So, one important concern is here T p m minus T a divided by 2 this component is used. Why this component is used? Because see if we consider this plate 
from plate heat loss will take place something like TPM minus TA okay? and this heat loss will be reducing slowly towards the top and then again towards the bottom. So, this average can be taken up, okay? the average heat loss can be taken up. So, that is why this term is divided by 2. So, average temperature drop across the side insulation can be considered something like TPM minus TA divided by 2. Okay? So, if I am interested about this US, then how we can do it? QS divided by AP multiplied by TPM minus TA. So, this is the expression and what is the plate area? If we consider this L1 and L2 is the breadth and then length, then if we multiply this, then what we will get is AP, okay? what is written here. And this expression is known to us, if we substitute this value, then what we will have is nothing but US. Okay? This US is nothing but the side loss coefficient. Right? So, once we know this side loss coefficient, bottom loss coefficient and top loss coefficient, then we can calculate what will be the overall loss coefficient. Okay? So, once it is done, then we can calculate what is QL. Okay? So, once we know QL, then we can go back to our energy equation, then AP into S minus QL. So, if this information is known to us and once we know this, then what we can calculate is QU. Okay? So, once we are done with QU, then we can do all those calculations or performance characteristics calculation. Right? Now, let us take a very small problem. Say, for a FPC with a top loss coefficient of 6.6 .6 watt meter square per degree Celsius, if we are interested to determine the overall loss coefficient by using the following data, then how to do it? Okay? So, back insulation thickness is given as 0 0.045, then insulation conductivity or this is no thermal conductivity, this is not insulation, this is a thermal conductivity, this is thermal conductivity, thermal conductivity, this thermal conductivity is something like 0 0.04 watt meter square per degree Celsius, then collector bank length is given, collector bank width is given, collector thickness is given, then edge or side insulation thickness is given as 0 0.02 meter. Okay? So, how we can calculate this UB? Already we have the information, UB is nothing but Ki by del B. So, straight away we can substitute the values of thermal conductivity of the insulation. So, this is uh, 0 0.04 and then thickness is 0 0.045, then what we will get is UB. UB is nothing but 0 0.889 watt meter square per degree Celsius. Right? And US we can apply the knowledge what we have derived now. So, US is something like this, then just to substitute the values here what is given in this problem, then we will get a value of 0 0.084 watt meter square per degree Celsius. Okay? So, since UT is given, this value is given to us, this is nothing but UT, then UL straight we can calculate UT plus UB plus US. So, substituting those values what we have calculated now, so then what we will get is about 7.573 watt meter square per degree Celsius. Okay? So, as we understand each value should be in between 2 to 10 watt meter square per degree Celsius. Okay? So, since this value is in between then it is a feasible collector design. Okay? So, this kind of design is accepted. Right? Now, let us take a somewhat bigger problem in order to understand the things very clearly. This problem has been uh, incorporated in this lecture. So, example goes something like calculate the overall loss coefficient of a flat plate collector with two glass covers. Okay? We will have two glass covers and following data is given, size of the observer plate is given, then spacing between the first glass and then no plate 
is given, spacing between the first and second glass is given, then the plate emissivity is given, then glass cover emissivity is given, okay, tilt angle is given and mean plate temperature is given as 73 degree Celsius, ambient air temperature is 25, wind speed is given as 2.7 meter per second, back insulation thickness is 10 centimeter, side insulation thickness is 5 centimeter, thermal conductivity of insulation is 0 0.07 watt meter Kelvin. Okay. So, we can use those correlations for estimation of heat transfer coefficient between the plates and the plate to the ambient okay. and also we can use the properties of air. Okay. So, to understand clearly let us draw this figure first. So, we will have two glass covers, okay. this, these are two glass covers and then we will have one absorber plate okay. and we will have insulation, side insulation as well as we have bottom insulation. So, these are insulation, these are insulation. Okay. So, this is given as 5 centimeter, okay. this is also 5 centimeter, 5 centimeter and this is 10 centimeter okay, in the problem and this angle beta is given as 23 degree okay. and a p plate area is given as 1.9 meter by 0 0.9 meter okay. and this thickness is given as 5 centimeter and emissivity of this absorber. So, this is a absorber plate, okay. this is an absorber plate, this emissivity of this absorber plate I will write plate. So, this will be 0 0.85 and for these two cases, okay. so emissivity will be, so this is C, C1 and C2 will be 0 0.85. right? And also it is given that TPM is 73 degree C, right. So, we can convert it to Kelvin. So, 73 plus 273.15 to be very precise. So, it will be 346.15 Kelvin. Okay? So, TPM is known to us now. Then what is TA which is given in the problem is 25 degree C which is nothing but 25 plus 273 it will be 298.15 Kelvin. Okay. And also we know T sky temperature is nothing but T A minus 6. So, this expression we can use for calculation of T sky. So, T ambient is 298.15 minus 6 which will be equal to 292.15 Kelvin. Okay. This is T sky, this is T sky S K Y. Okay. So, this value is also known to us. Right. Now, what we want first we need to calculate top loss coefficient, then only you can calculate no U L okay because first if we are interested about no U L then what you need to do first U T plus then U B plus U S. So, all the three parameters are required. Okay. Let us first calculate this U T. Okay. So, the kind of techniques we are going to use here is a trial and error. Okay. It is iter iterative techniques. Okay. We have correlations to get direct result of U T, but no first let us understand how this can be calculated by using this iterative technique. Okay. So, let us wrap this part, this is not required at the moment. So, this top loss coefficient, okay. so our interest is U T we are going to calculate. Okay. So, in order to calculate this U T, what you need to know? This T C 1 which is unknown for us, okay. T C 2 is unknown for us, only known is T P M, okay. then these values are known, this is known this can be calculated by using correlations okay correlations by using correlations and these two values are known this is known this is known but this is 
unknown okay and this qt we need to calculate so we'll get three different you know nonlinear equations and uh, we need to solve for qt by ap right so let us proceed with the given data so what we can write here so h p c1 then we have tpm what is tpm 346.15 minus tc1 plus sigma value is known to us 5.67 into 10 to the power of minus 8 then tpm is 340 6.15 to the power of 4 minus tc1 to the power of 4 okay and for this expression hc1 to c2 then tc1 to tc2 these two are unknown then we have 5.67 into 10 to the power of minus 8 then we will have tc1 to the power of 4 tc to the power tc to the power of 4 and then these values are known to us okay so 1 by here is for plate it is uh, 0 0.85 and then for glass it is uh, let me check where is uh, yeah for plate it is 0 0.9 it is 0.9 okay so this for plate it is 0 0.9 this is 0 0.9 and this is 0 0.85 okay this is minus 1 so here we have 0 0.85 then plus 1 by 0 0.85 minus 1 okay and hw then we'll have uh, tc2 is unknown then t sky is known to us 292.15 plus then we have sigma 5.67 into 10 to the power of minus 8 stephen boltzmann constant then this value is 0 0.85 then t c 2 to the power 4 minus t sky is 292.154 okay so we can simplify it further so this equation may be we can give is 1 and this may be 2 and this may be 3 okay so what are those equations the these equation take care of the heat transfer or rate of heat transfer takes place between this absorber plate to the glass cover one. So, I will write here you no know, cover one, this is cover two, glass cover two, and this is TPM. I will write, okay, or say I will write uh, plate, okay, I'll write plate, plate having temperature TPM, okay, this is at TPM, okay, this TPM will already known to us, okay. Now, our next step is to calculate this heat transfer coefficient. Okay? So, we need to use appropriate correlation for calculation of this heat transfer coefficient. Right? So, before we do that, we must know the temperature of Tc1, but which is uh, not given. Okay? We need to assume those uh, values Tc1 and Tc2. We need to apply our common sense. Right? So, Ta, if we write Ta here, so Ta will be how much is given 298.15 okay so this temperature what we got is 346 okay so 346 minus 298.15 it's about uh, 48 right so it's half is 24 so if we consider this value tc1 say let tc1 is uh, equal to 328 Kelvin and T C two is uh, three zero six Kelvin. Thus, we have applied our common sense. Okay, so this temperature is three hundred and forty six point one five, and uh, ambient is two ninety eight point one five. Okay, and then it is presumed that this is, this will be somewhat uh, hotter than uh, this one. So that's how we have considered three hundred and twenty eight, which is you know more than the average of this uh, TA and TPM okay? and uh, TC2 is uh, you know, 306 we have considered just we are assuming this value okay? because we have to do trial and error. Okay? So, there will be two uh, values of TC1 and TC2 which 
gives the same result of all the three expressions. So, once it is matched, then we can say that it is converged. Okay? So, this tissue 1 and tissue 2 have assumed. Okay? Now, what we need to do for calculation of H uh, P 1 means now heat transfer coefficient from plate to the cover 1, then we need to take average of this T P M and T C 1. Right? So, this T mean T mean will be 346.15 which is nothing but T P M plus we have this is tissue 1, tissue 1 is 328 okay, divided by 2 which will give us a value which is equal to 337.075 to be precise in Kelvin. Okay. So, once we know this T mean then we can get the data for air at this temperature okay, because in between we will have airs, okay, no liquid is there. So, our tubes will be here. Okay. So, in centigrade it will be 63.925 degree C. Okay. Now, what we need to do? We need to use this property table. Okay. So, since this is at uh, Celsius, okay, so we have 63, this value is in between here. So, we have to interpolate. Okay. So, to get the values of all, like you no, know, we need Prandtl number, kinematic viscosity, then thermal diffusivity, conductivity, okay, all those values are required. So, if we calculate it, it is found to be nu is that is kinematic viscosity is 1.9348 into 10 to the power of minus 5 meter square per second and K is thermal conductivity is 0 0.02837 watt meter Kelvin and Prandtl number is 0 0.7192. Okay. So, these values we can get from the property table. Okay. We must know that air is there in between these two plates, okay? no fluid is present. So, once we know these values, then what we need to calculate? We need to calculate the release number. Okay? So, let me calculate the release number. So, this R A cos of beta. Okay? So, R A is nothing but your Gars of number multiplied by Prandtl number, then we have cos of beta. Okay. So, this is nothing but beta this z delta t l cube by nu square and then you have Prandtl number because these values are known to us and we have cos of beta. So, this beta this is nothing but 1 by t mean what we have just calculated at which we have taken the property data. So, this is something like 1 by we have uh, 337.075 this is for beta and then gamma is 1.9348 into 10 to the power of minus 5. Okay. So, this is something like this then we have delta t 346.15 minus 328 okay, and length is given as length means the distance between these two plate. Okay. So, this is 0 0.05, this is the characteristic length okay. and we have Prandtl number is 0 0.7192. Right. So, this is found to be and of course, we need to multiply by cos of beta, beta value is 23. Okay. So, if we do the analysis, then what we will get is something like 116770.384. Okay. So, this value is for R A cos beta. right? So, now 
we have to apply the appropriate correlations. So, let us check which correlation can be used for estimation of heat transfer coefficient from observer plate to the glass cover one. Okay. So, let us go back and see this value we should remember 116770. So, see check 117670. So, we must use the correlation here. Okay. So, our value falls in between this range. So, we need to apply this correlation. So, this correlation Nusselt number is equal to 0 0.157 means R a cos of beta 0 0.2 285. Okay. So, since we have already understood what is the cell number and other um, parameters, then straight away you can calculate what is the heat transfer coefficient. Okay. So, this is nothing but H P to C 1. Okay. Then multiplied by characteristics length L. Okay. This is K is the conductivity. So, 0 0.157 then R a cos beta is something like 116770.384 to the power of 0 0.285. Okay. So, what will be H p c 1? This value multiplied by k by L. Okay. So, this is something like okay, 4.366 into k by L. Okay. So, this is found to be 2.477 watt meter square Kelvin okay. H P C 1. Right. So, this K value is 0 0.02837 and this L is 0 0.05. Right. So, we can know now what is the value of H p C 1. Okay. Now, what is next? We need to calculate what is H C 1 to C 2. Okay. So, for this case what we need to do? We need to consider this temperature and this temperature. Okay. So, already we have assumed that this T C 2 temperature is 306. This is 306 and we have 328. Okay. So, what will be the mean temperature here? So, I will write it here. So, T mean will be 328 plus 306 divided by 2. So, which will give us a value of 317 Kelvin, right? And which is nothing but 43.85. Okay, degree C. Okay, so this is the temperature. So now properties of air need to be taken at a temperature of forty-three point eight five. So just go back to this slide. This is forty-three. Okay, so properties will be in between this forty and forty-five. Okay, so we need to find out the properties by doing. So, I am going to calculation here. Okay. So, it is 43, right? This is in between, in between uh, 40 and 45. So, we need to apply this our principle uh, like uh, interpolation. Okay. So, uh, I will just show one calculation. So, if I am interested for say uh, Prandtl number, so it is variation is not much. Okay. You can take this uh, average here. Say, for example, diffusivity okay if i am interested to measure diffusivity at 43 then what we need to do 2.346 into 10 to the power of minus 5 so uh, you see it's, it's increasing okay so then you have to plus okay so um, we need to differentiate it this may be uh, 2.416 minus 2.346 divided by 5 into 3 say 43 I am interested. Okay. So, uh, that way we can calculate at 43 what will be the value of this 
thermal diffusivity. So, uh, this kind of calculations we need to do for all the other parameters. Okay? So, at uh, temperature 43, the values of thermal diffusivity alpha will be something like this. So, this is the way uh, we can find out the values where uh, no, uh, these values are not given in the table. Okay? So, we use the appropriate uh, no, uh, values and we can uh, do the calculation now. So, at these conditions as per my calculation, so it is found to be nu is equal to or kinematic viscosity is 1.7389 into 10 to the power of minus 5 okay, in meter square per second and k is equal to 0 0.0269 watt meter kelvin okay and the prandtl number is equal to 0 0.7246 okay so these values are known to us then we can uh, uh, calculate what is ra cos of beta okay so this expression already known to us okay so beta this z delta t l cube Okay, new square, then Prandtl number, okay, then we have cos of beta, right. So, beta this is here 1 by t min, so 1 by t min is 317, also it been Kelvin, and multiplied by 9.81, and uh, delta t is no, now between 2 class covers, okay. So, delta t is in between these two, okay. So, this will be 328 minus 306, okay. So, 328 minus 306. So, this will be 328 minus 306, right? And we will have new square or uh, L is again no distance between these two plate is 0 0.05, 0 0.05 cube, and uh, here uh, new square is 1.7389 into 10 to the power of minus 5, okay? This is uh, square and multiplied by Prandtl number. What is the value of Prandtl number here? 0 0.7246 okay? and multiplied by cos of 23. Okay? So, this is found to be 187710.11. This is Ra cos of beta. Okay? So, this is known now. Okay? So, once you know this, then we can again uh, see which correlation is appropriate for us. This is uh, 187710. So, again the same correlation you need to apply. So, this value is also in between this range. Okay? So, same correlation you need to apply. Right? So, correlation is here. So, HC1 to C2, then you have L by K is equal to 0 0.157 then 187710.11 to the power of 0 0.285. Okay? So, on calculation, so what value we will get is uh, HC1 to C2 is nothing but 2.6889 watt meter square Kelvin. Okay? So, this value we got. What next we want? H w, right? So, how to calculate H w? So, already we know the expression for H w, which is also given here in the problem. So, H w is 5.7 plus 3.8 into u infinity. Okay? So, this is uh, 5.7 plus 3.8 into velocity. Okay. So, these values are given 5.7 plus 3.8 into 2.7. Okay. So, this is found to be 15.96. So, this is what meter square Kelvin. So, we know now H P C 1 
H C 1 C 2 then H W. Okay. So, now go back to our this expression. So, these values are calculated now, this is known, this is known, this is known and these are the assumed values. Now, we need to check what is the value for this expression, what is the value for this expression, what is the value for this expression. If these values are not equal, then we have to come back to here again and we have to select two values of T C 1 and T C 2 which gives approximately similar result of all these three equations. Okay? So, if we use now this equation 1, 2 and 3, so if we use equation, equation 1, then 2 and 3, okay? so uh, already we have done it like q t by a p okay? for this equation and then q t by a p for this equation, then q t by a p for this equation. Okay? So, this expression is known to us. So, if you do the calculation, so what we have already I have done the calculation. So, if you substitute those values, then we will get something like this. Okay? So, if 328 was the first assumption for T C 1 and 306 for T C 2, then by using the equation 1, we will get this value 167.498. And by using equation 2, we get 176.803 and by using equation 3, we get 196.749. Okay? So, since the variation is very, very high, we cannot use this combination to calculate Q t values. Right? So, then we need to assume another sets of data. Okay? So, as per my calculations, what I have done, I have varied the temperature to 327 for T C 1 and then 305 for T C 2 and it is found that this approximation actually you know, gives very close result. Okay? So, it is about 176.925, 175.391 and 175.293. Okay? So, these are very, very close. So, what we can do? We can take average of these three results. Okay? If we take the average, then what we will get is 175.869. Okay? So, this value we can take for calculation of Q t by A p. Okay? So, this Q t by A p will be 175.869. Okay? This, is, this will be in watt per meter square. Right? So, what happens now? We will, this is a parameter square, we will calculate what is ut. Okay? So, top loss coefficient, top loss coefficient that is ut is nothing but qt by ap, then you will have tpm minus T A. Right? So, this value is 175.869 to T P M. So, T P M was 346.15 minus 298.15. Okay? So, once you do this calculation, then what we will get? is the value for ut which is nothing but 3.664 watt meter square kelvin okay this is ut so ut is done then we can calculate what is bottom loss coefficient and side loss coefficient so for bottom loss coefficient bottom loss coefficient that is u b k i by delta b. Okay? k i is the conductivity of the insulation and delta b is the thickness. So, this value is 0 0.07 in this problem and, uh, 
delta B is given as 0.1 meter. So, it will be 0 0.7 watt meter square Kelvin. So, U B also we have calculated now. Then we will calculate side loss or edge loss, side loss coefficient, side loss coefficient that is U S is we can use that equation L 1 plus L 2 multiplied by H then we have K i to the L 1, L 2, then we have delta S, right. So, if you substitute those values L 1 and L 2 is 1.9 is the length and width is 0 0.9 and the H is uh, height is uh, 0 0.2 and then we will have uh, K i is uh, 0 0.07. Okay. And then we will have L 1 is 1.9 multiplied by 0 0.9 into delta S is given as 0 0.05, side thickness is 0 0.05. So, what is the height here? I will go back here to get this height. So, this is 5 centimeter, this is 5 centimeter and this is 10 centimeter. So, 5 plus 5 plus 10 it becomes 20 centimeter. Okay. So, 20 centimeter means 0.2 meter. Okay. That is how is the height of the collector. Okay. So, this is nothing but the H. Okay. So, what we have to use for calculation of side loss coefficient. Okay. So, this is what we got this 0.2 and uh, once you do this calculation then US is found to be 0 0.4585 watt meter square Kelvin. Okay. So, this US is something like this. So, as we know overall loss coefficient overall loss coefficient can be defined as U L is U T plus U B plus U S. Okay. So, if we substitute those values 3.664 plus U B is 0 0.7 plus 0 0.4585. So, it is found to be 4.8225 watt meter square Kelvin. Okay. So, this is the overall loss coefficient which is in between 2 to 10 watt meter square Kelvin which is recommended. Okay. So, our design is a good design. Okay. So, losses are not, uh, not much. So, this design can be adopted. Okay. So, I will just briefly tell what we have done in this problem. So, problem was something like calculation of overall loss coefficient. So, in order to find out the overall loss coefficient, we need three parameters. One is top loss coefficient, one is bottom loss coefficient and one is side loss coefficient. These three loss coefficients are required to calculate U L. Okay? To find out this U T, we have adopted trial and error methods. Okay? So, we know the heat exchange between this plate to the glass cover one can be represented by this equation and then heat exchange from this plate 1 to plate 2 can be represented by this equation and then from plate 2 to ambient can be represented by this equation. It involves two components radiative heat transfer components and convective heat transfer component okay, in all the three cases. So, what we did first we have substituted those values and we have identified the unknowns. Okay. The HPC1 H C 1 to C 2 H W these are unknown and this were calculated by using standard correlations. Okay. And T C 1 and T C 2 are unknown for us we have assumed it sets of values and we try to see the numerical values what we have received based on this assumption. If these values are found to be same for three cases then that set can be considered as the final glass temperatures or cover temperatures. Okay. And also we need to find out the 
properties at the mean temperature of these two parallel plates for all the cases. So, if we are interested about this, then we need to consider the plate temperature and then class cover temperature, then we have find out the values of T mean and then we can get the air data from the property table, right. Then we can use it for calculation of these three values, right. So, we have done the calculations how this can be applied. So, once we know R A cos beta, then we must check which correlation to be used for this appropriate application. Then once we are finalized with that, then from that we can calculate what is H P C 1, okay. And accordingly, you can calculate what is H C 1 to C 2 and then H W. So, once you know this, then uh, we need to check whether all are same or not. If it is not same, then we have to go back again and we have to consider a new set of T C 1 and T C 2, okay. And that will continue till we get a uniform result of Q T by A P for all the three equations, okay. So, uh, first set of reading we got this which are different from each other. Then finally, what we got is a very close values given by all the three equations. Then we have taken the average and uh, once you know these values, then straight away you can calculate what will be the top loss coefficient because we know the expression Q T is A P multiplied by T P M minus T A. So, heat loss is taking place from the plate to the ambient, right. So, these values are known to us and this is calculated, okay. From that we have calculated U T, then we have calculated U B, these are the standard equations, then side loss coefficients we have uh, calculated, then overall loss coefficients we have calculated which are the sum of all the three losses or loss coefficients, okay. So, which is found to be 4.822 and uh, which is fall in the recommended values which is 2 to 10 watt per meter square per Kelvin, okay. So, that way we can calculate the loss or estimate the losses taking place in a flat plate collector, right. So, there are empirical relations available. So, without going this trial and error, we can straight away use some kind of established correlation to find out ut values of the particular collector, right. So, this correlation was developed by uh, clean, okay. So, this is a very uh, long correlation and there are set of datas, okay. We need to check what is the value of TPM that has to be in between 320 to 420 Kelvin, then uh, what is the ambient temperature? This ambient temperature must be in between 260 to 310 Kelvin. Then what is the emissivity of the plate? It should be uh, from 0 0.1 to 0 0.95. Then what is the velocity of the wind? Okay. And then the number of covers and then what is the tilt angle? All those things uh, need to be in that range. Then only you can use this correlation. Okay. And the one more correlations which is developed by Malhotra et al. Okay. So, these correlations can also be used for calculation of top loss coefficients okay, without doing the iteration method, right. So, we can summarize what we have uh, discussed today. Primarily, we have discussed the heat loss from the collectors, what are different heat losses and then heat loss coefficients like top loss coefficient, bottom loss coefficient, side loss coefficient and if we combine all these losses, what we will get is a overall loss coefficient. We have also solved problems how to calculate losses associated with FPCs, okay. There are two techniques, one is iterative techniques for calculation of uh, UT or top loss coefficient or we can go for standard correlation for estimation of UT values, okay. So, I hope you understand what we have discussed today and these are the basis of estimation of losses and which finally, give the information about the performance of a flat plate collector. So, thank you very much for watching this video.